Hi everyone, I'm Dan Elliott and welcome to this video on importing sprites into your game and using them to design your level so that your character can walk on them. So I'm going to import a sprite that I created and it's a texture of some grass that I want to use. So like in the previous video I went and made sure that it had a correct alpha so that paper 2D can detect where its edges are. So we're just going to import it at the end of the game and we'll proceed. And this brought this in as a texture. So now what we want to do is extract sprite from that texture and now we have a sprite. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that uh, the source region is looking good for our sprite and the next thing is we can come up to the top right here and choose edit collision and automatically it's created a nice bounding box for the collision so that our character can collide against this. All of the collision is based off of this 2D bounding box so to, to highlight that I will simply drag a sprite into the world and we can actually view the collision that the sprite generates by hitting Alt-C or coming up to here to show and turning on collision. And that will show the depth at which this collision will, will occur at. If we wanted to change how deep that this collision is extruded, we can come into the sprite. And if we come down to collision and collision thickness, we can inc increase that. And so that was 10 before, and I've changed that to 30. So if we save that, and now look at the collision, the, the depth of that collision is now much larger because we've increased it from 10 units to 30 units. I can even show an extreme example of making that 100. And we can see in the viewport that, that the collision depth has increased, increasing the chances that our character will collide with it. And from the front viewport, we don't see the difference in the collision depth because we're looking at it from the front. But um, 10 should be enough by default. So now if we go back to the, the perspective view, and if we just hit play, we can see that the character now collides with with, it, with this sprite. And there's a bit of a gap there. And one thing that we can see is that there's a bit of a glitch going on. Whenever the character is colliding with the ledge, a ledge, the character disappears. And to fix that, we need to go into the character blueprint, come to the spring arm for the camera, and we should come down to do collision test. Because what's happening is that the camera spring arm is colliding with the ledge as well and the camera is moving to get out of the way of that collision so if we uncheck this do collision test compile if we replay then we should see that we're no longer getting that glitch and the character is colliding properly with the ledge to provide some improved collision what we can do is go back into the sprite and under geometry type we can change that to shrink wrapped and if we look at the collision then it automatically creates this um, more complex geometry shrink around the sprite and I'm just going to reduce the collision extrusion on that so that it doesn't stick so far out into the world and now when we look at the, the collision geometry that's generated we will get much more accurate collision around the shape of the sprite. So we can see that the character now, when it's underneath, is obeying the collision of the sprite much more. So we have this gap between the, the paper sprite and the collision object. We want to make sure that the, the gap there isn't due to our perspective camera. So we're going to come to our camera 
and we'll change that to an orthographic just so we can test to see where, how big that gap is so we can see that yep there's definitely a bit of a gap there so we'll come to our character come to our components and what we can do is we can grab our sprite and we can simply just bring it down a bit to fill that gap so we'll still collide with the capsule but the sprite will be rendered slightly lower let's just move it down a bit more so let's try that well that will do for now, you, you can tweak that yourself to get that working however you want it so I'm going to change our camera back to a perspective camera now and that looks ok for now and you can notice that we're falling quite quickly from the ledge straight to the floor so that's probably something we want to change in the character movement component so the other thing I can see is when I step off this ledge it's kind of springing down to the ground very quickly and the reason for that is because in our character movement component there's this max step height variable which is the maximum height the character can step up and at the moment that's too high for the, for the size of our character so if we reduce that hit compile and play then that distance now doesn't register to the character as a distance that he can step down so he just falls off naturally and there's other things like I can, I can get stuck under here because of the collision capsule but they're all things that you know are tweakable and you'd want to test in your game and get right and there's actually just one more thing I want to, to change in the character in the character movement component I want to come down and constrain this to plane and I want to constrain this to you have to give it a plane normal so the, the plane is pointing in the direction minus one and we're constraining the character to that so you can imagine the plane that represents the screen facing towards us and we're sticking the character on that plane. And that might not necessarily be what you want, but in this case it's a 2D game, so that's what we're doing. If you want, you can, we can have the character move in depth, but we're just having the character move in two axes. So I'm just going to drag a few more of these ledges into the world. And just, I want to make them all stick on the wire plane and I want to scale some of them up and I will move them around and I'm just going to have a quick play and see how that works I can see that my character is jumping quite high, so I'll just reduce that. So I want to make the jump Z velocity, I'll change that to 100. And give it a good play. That's too low now, you can't even get up there. increase it a bit more and see how this plays well this is all stuff that can be tweaked and refined but the general workflow is there and this is, hopefully this is all something 
that you can use to create your own games. That's going to wrap things up for this video. If there's anything you want to ask, then please feel free to comment. And also, if you want to, subscribe. Thanks for watching.